I'm going to talk about the atrogenically altered breasts. We see this a lot. In, I'm going to include trauma in this. It's actually not caused by physicians, but you know, it, it looks like physician-induced change. So we'll talk about post-trauma, post-lumpectomy, post-reconstruction, post-augmentation, post-core needle biopsy, post-mammotomy, post-reduction mammoplasty, post-mastectomy, post-axillary dissection, pre-radiation, post-radiation, and post-chemotherapy. So there's a host of altered breasts that we, we do look at in the course of performing uh, breast imaging. Now, I want to give you a little historical perspective on how markers were first developed. Um, before we even had vacuum biopsy, there were a small percentage of cases that the core biopsy device actually removed, little bitty teeny things, where they'd go in, you know, and perform a lumpectomy and they couldn't find any residual disease. So we realized that we, we had to develop markers. Well, a good marker is a hematoma or a seroma, uh, but with a core biopsy, you don't always get that. With a vacuum biopsy, you virtually always have a little seroma there for a few days anyway. But if they come back a few weeks later, that may be gone. So the mammotomy clip was developed. And again, this is of historical interest. It was put in through a vacuum probe. Initially, we didn't, biops we didn't mark core biopsies. We only marked uh, um, the uh, vacuums because they developed a device you could deploy through the vacuum device. But it was weird because it clipped onto the sidewall of the cavity rather than deploying in the center. And I'll show you what the problem with that is and why they developed the pledges that you just dump in the center.